Hello, Bass family, and welcome to Everything Bass. So, um, you know, sometimes my concepts for a video comes through working with one of my private students, and I uh, recently had a Zoom lesson, and it's with a gentleman who's working through jazz with me, and he brought up a great song. Um, it was a song that he's actually was performing in a short amount of time. He had like a week, and he was performing Beyond the Sea. And... Um, you know, it's a great song. Uh, the one thing that's a little bit intimidating at times for players is there's two chords per bar for most of it. Every once in a while, I'm looking at the chart at my feet if you're wondering what I'm looking down. Um, every once in a while, there's like one measure of a full chord. And, you know, I wanted to give him some very basic ways to practice the chart, to be ready to play it live literally in a handful of days. And, um, something that's simple to memorize, simple to execute. And then I realized, you know what, this is a great lesson for someone who's brand new to jazz. Uh, if you're brand new, you really want to get into it, but just seem like it's intimidating, I want, I want you to really try this video because it was my approach when I first started. And I really feel like it, uh, it makes it attainable. It gives you something you can play now. Now there's a concept called the safety net in improvisation. The safety net is, foundational study something you can do like cold you can do if your amps freaking out if there's distraction someone drops a, a a tray of dishes whatever the distraction might be something you can fall back on that's foolproof and that's what these uh, exercises i'm going to give you today are uh, you can find this chart online um, if you actually type into your favorite search engine beyond the c key of f chart You'll see and go to the images uh, results. You actually see usually um, someone has put the chart in. It's obviously in the real book. That's where I got mine. Um, I got the uh, base real book on Amazon decades ago, and, and it's in there. All right. So, uh, and, you know, I'll probably make a, like a framework of the A section just for this study and put it on my Patreon page. If you're a Patreon um, supporter, you can download it for free, obviously. So uh, let's, let's take a look at the first two measures. First two measures are F6 for two beats, a D minor seven for two beats, a G minor seven for two beats, and a C dominant seven for two beats. So you have four, car, four chords in two measures. So what I want you to start with is simply roots. And I know you're like thinking, well, that's not very jazz walking line, but if you listen to the, uh, like Bobby Darren's version of it, um, is it Bobby Darren? Uh, anyway, just go back and listen. You'll hear in the earlier recordings, you'll hear a lot of times the bass player just plays roots. You know, it just fits. It's fine. It's not something that, uh, like, is disgraceful. If you do it over and over again, it just gets boring for everybody. But it's a good starting point. And what you're really doing is mapping out your fingerboard for that particular set of chords. So we've got F to D minor, F6 to D minor. So you've got F, F, D, D. Then you've got G minor 7 to C7. That's a 2-5. So just getting used to that. Root, 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 root. Now, one thing you could do that's super helpful to you as a player and will help all of your playing, like your funk playing, your jazz playing, your rock playing, your blues playing, is maybe set up a loop with just those four chords on your favorite looping device or even use your phone to record uh, the chords. If you have a friend who's a piano player or if you can play another instrument, record those chords, not fast, and every time you repeat, try not to play the same roots. So like, you know, I started F, F, D, D, G, G, C. Now kind of up here. Now maybe F, F here, there, uh, slide up. Then maybe do something crazy, go up to the G. Just doing that is super helpful. It's helping you really learn where your notes are in new ways so that you know your fingerboard extremely well. So that's a valuable exercise. Again, tempo, I don't even really care about tempo. Don't even set up tempo. But if you're playing along with a loop, obviously there's gonna be tempo there. Um, so just try to make it as slow as possible. Uh, so that's the first thing. Another thing you can do is simply root octaves. You know, just root. And you can experiment with like inverting it, like play root, octave, octave, root, root, octave, octave, root, simple like that. Next thing is fifths, root and fifths. If you go back to early, early, early jazz, um, especially if you go back to when a lot of the bass lines were covered by tubas, you'll hear a lot of roots and fifths. Um, and that's a great exercise in itself. So just taking this progression, F, D, G minor, C, C dominant seven, you can go root, fifth, 
then up to the D, root fifth, G. Now what's nice about the root fifth uh, method is unless the chord is diminished or augmented, you're playing the same root fifth shape um, for any minor, major, and dominant seventh chords. The other thing you can play with is knowing that, like on, let's say we're playing this F here. The fifth can be found here, the C here, or it can be the C right below the F. That's root fifth, this is root fifth. Again, if you're starting to be a little shady on, shaky on the um, intervals, go back to my, I did six vi uh, videos called the Understanding Intervals, and it covers the 12 intervals found between the root and the octave, including the root and the octave. So this will really help you. So yeah, you've got root, five. Now when you go up to the D, I kind of like playing the D and the fifth below because I'm going to G. See how I direct the bass line? I'm playing up. So I use the fifth above F, well mainly because I don't have another option on this bass, because it walks up to the D. Now I play the fifth below D, the A, because it walks back down to the G. Then I play the fifth above, and I play the C and the fifth below. So you get this really cool line. So roots and fifths, great. And again, same thing as before. Play them all over. Try to get everywhere on the bass. Even if you might think this is impractical, but do it up there. Because you got the notes there. You might as well practice them, know what they sound like, know where they're located, which is the biggest deal. Um, all right, so we've got where you played roots, roots and octaves, roots and fifths, now roots and thirds. Now this is a nice little degree of difficulty bump because you're finding that uh, you've got two choices. Chords are either going to have a major third or a minor third. Now I'm excluding like sus chords and chords that have no third in a parenthetical statement. But uh, between like in this case we have F6 that's got a major third, D minor 7 obviously a minor third, G minor 7 a minor third, and C7 a major third. So I got this F and F6. I'll play the open A which is a major third. I go up to the D I got a minor third then I got the G and a minor third, and a C, and a major third. So you get this, I'm oh, sorry. Very cool. Likewise, there's. it's important to know, like if you played the octave, like if I played the octave F, that the A is still the major third. It doesn't always have to be this shape. That's an easy shape to remember, but knowing how to play the F, the, the tonic, and the major third below, can create some really cool sound. See, there I did G, I go down to the B flat because it goes up to the C beautifully. And then I might, from the C, C dominant seven has a major third. It's a great time to drop that open E because that's the, uh, that's the major third of uh, C dominant seven. So you can really invert, just like we did with the fifths, you can play an octave and find the third below it. A little more study involved with this, but it's so beneficial and makes your improv so much better. Now, of the fourth thing I'm going to give you, uh, just to practice, is the, the one we've talked about in a previous lesson, which is root chromatic. And that's a cool little device, super simple. It's a safety net that usually, as long as you know where all the tonics are located, you can't fall off. Um, so we're starting with the F. We can pick either, uh, going up to the D, we can either pick the C sharp or the E flat to go to the D. So in this case, I'll do, I'll, I'll approach everything from the half step low. So I go F, half step into D, half step into G, half step into C. So it gives this. Very simple. Likewise, you can come from above the next root, do a half step above the next root. So simple. F, D is my next chord tone or my next tonic. I play the E flat. Next chord is G, so I play an A flat. Next chord is C, so I play D flat. Just approaching from the above. Next thing you can practice is mixing them. From, you know, like you might go half step below, above, below, above. You're going to find some sound better than others, but they all work, especially on faster tune, uh, tempos. If you're playing a super slow ballad, I wouldn't recommend the chromatic, because um, if you're holding the chromatic that long, it can sound sour to the ear. But it's good on up medium to, medium to up tempo, and let your ear decide. Or the disapproving glances of everyone in the band. Then you'll know, huh, maybe that didn't work. Um, so once you do that, of course, you know, I'm going to sound like a broken record. 
but you go all the way up with that. You know, you might come all the way up and, and go. Do it up there, just playing all over the instrument. Lastly, of these four things I've asked you to practice, the last one is the most rewarding and only should be attempted when you have each one of the previous things. You can play the tonics and the octaves. You can play the roots and fifths with the root, yeah, the fifth either be above or below the root. You can play the root and third, again, with above or below. And you can play chromatics. Now just make them into a cool little mixture, and that's unique. And every time you repeat the progression, try a different combination. So I might go root, root, then I'll go up to the D, chromatic, to a fifth, to a third, playing the C. So you, you can get really cool. Uh, I messed that up, but you understand what I'm saying. Um, so you can literally spend so long just going through this over and over again and trying different ways. Um, I've done things where I, I've improvised and only allowed myself to improvise on two strings just so I can break out of old muscle memories and old habits and find new ideas. So remember, step one, tonics. Include, you know, just find the tonic for find any, for F6, use any F on the bass anywhere. Um, then roots and fifths, fifths above and below, roots and thirds, thirds above and below, then roots and chromatics. Mix them all together and you're actually creating a really good bass line. And what you're really creating is a safety net. So that is, you're trying to do more evolved walking bass lines. If something happens, you get lost on the chart, you're a little shaken, you can fall back to these four concepts, five, when you talk about mixing them up, and not have to stop, play a line that's completely viable and allows other people to shine. So what do you think about this? Um, I, I just, I, I dig the process. Um, sometimes I'll go through it if it's a new song. Um, usually it's songs that have two chords per bar. Um, if it's a, a traditional jazz song or a song that has, uh, you know, one chord per bar or sometimes even one chord for every two bars i won't use the same approach because playing roots the entire time is a bit boring for the listener um, but that's when i go into usually you know chord tone studies and things like that um all right well let me know in the comments what you think i'm of course here to serve i want to make sure that you guys are all getting everything you can out of it i appreciate you coming by i appreciate all the other things subscribing to the channel has been great having over a thousand subscribers is just awesome it makes me feel um like you guys appreciate what i'm doing and of course, uh, you know, give me the thumbs up like. Uh, it really helps with the whole YouTube thing. Um, but I want to hear from you. You know, just uh, heck for anything. Just in the comments of this particular video, let me know what you're struggling with. And believe me, I read every single comment, um, and they all they all are very valuable to me. All right, sisters and brothers of bass, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for spending time out of your busy schedule to um, share some ideas with me. And I'll see you at the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.